Well, tensions remain high this weekend as protesters continue to camp outside Minneapolis 4th Precinct. Right now, you're looking at a live picture of that encampment outside the precinct. The NAACP and Black Lives Matter are organizing what is being billed as an interfaith prayer service outside the precinct that is expected to start within the hour. It was two weeks ago today when police shot and killed Jamar Clark as they were trying to arrest him after responding to an assault call. Since Clark's death, there have been a series of protests, including one that shut down Interstate 94. On Monday night, five protesters were shot by three young white men. That triggered a massive march to City Hall. Three suspects in the shooting of those five protesters are under arrest and charges could come against them as soon as tomorrow. In the aftermath of the Jamar Clark shooting, Congressman Keith Ellison rushed back to Minneapolis and has been meeting with protesters, city and state leaders, and even facilitated a meeting between Jamar Clark's family and Governor Mark Dayton. And Congressman Ellison joins us now live. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having me, Esme. All right, let me ask you, I know you've been very much in touch with Jamar Clark's family. Do they want that protest to continue outside the 4th Precinct? Well, Eddie Sutton, who uh, is the brother of Jamar Clark, was very concerned about safety after the shooting of the five uh, folks who were at the protest by these, these white supremacist group guys. Uh, and so he said, look, uh, he didn't want anybody else getting shot. He didn't want any more bloodshed. So he said it should, should, should stop. But I'll say this, a lot of the folks at the uh, encampment are uh, outraged by police involved shootings that they've seen all over the country and here in, in Minneapolis. Uh, it, it is important to recognize that it's not just one case that people are responding to. Although, yeah, Eddie did say that he, that he didn't want any more bloodshed and he wanted the, the, uh, the encampment to not stop. He, wanted, he didn't want the protest to stop, but he wants, he wants justice for Jamar. So that, in his view, means focusing on this grand jury process. Uh, as you know, historically, grand juries have uh, always exonerated uh, police and officer involved shootings so he's he's real concerned about that uh, and he thinks that the focus needs to shift to making sure that the case gets uh, just treatment. All right. Uh, let's take a look at a Star Tribune photo that uh, ended up being of your son. It was not originally yeah. identified in the Star Tribune as your son. Uh, it's a Star Tribune photo. It was on the front page of the Star Tribune over a week ago. Uh, retweeted 4,000 times. Um, your comments about that particular picture uh, as a father? It's agonizing. I mean, as you can see, Jeremiah has his hands up. He is there using his First Amendment right to protest what he regarded as a, a, a real problem in terms of this, this shooting. And so I'm proud that he believes uh, in our First Amendment and his right to free expression, but that picture uh, really made my heart skip a beat, and uh, it still does. I'm not used to it. All right. Well, for the record, police say that, that what look, appears to be a gun was actually a chalk cannon that was apparently aimed not directly at him, but obviously something that you as a father yeah. reacted to. Well, the thing is, it's still a gun. It's, it's, it may not be a firearm, but it is a gun. And these non-lethal guns injure people all the time. You know, well, Congressman Ellison, I want to ask you about one of the protest marches on Tuesday. We have an image of a young man lying down in front of a car. I, I, this was part of the protest that took place on Tuesday. Uh, there he is right by the interstate here. I saw this. It could have been just a fraction of a second where a motorist who's unnerved could have hit the accelerator. It could have been worse. Are, are you concerned that some of the tactics being used by the demonstrators could exacerbate the situation? And frankly, police were incredibly restrained, I thought, in this situation. Well, as may I have to be candid with you and tell you that I'm, I'm concerned about the tactics of law enforcement as well. I mean, the fact is, is that whether it's this case or Freddie Gray or the thing in Chicago, I mean, people are responding to an outrageous situation that's been going on for too long. So people obviously are going to take desperate measures. Are the measures desperate? Yes, they are. I, I, I'm concerned about safety. I absolutely am concerned about safety. You know, five people shot the other night, other shootings the other day, real serious problem of air quality over there with all the wood burning fires. But I can never lose sight of what is propelling this whole thing, which is the fact that a lot of, that many people of color, low income people, and even a lot of white people just feel that the police mistreat them a lot. Now, I'm a person who it, it appreciates police. Most officers go into the field because they want to help people. But this is a longstanding serious problem and we cannot look away from it. And, 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 and yes, that situation was dangerous, but I can't lose sight of the, of the larger picture. 
and I, and I, I know that's not satisfying to a lot of people, but it is the reality for so many people of color that when they're stopped by the police, their blood run cold because they fear that they're going to get beat up or mistreated. Let me ask you quickly, you are an attorney. Are yes. you satisfied that everything is being done in terms of the legal process? Uh, there are a lot of demands to release this right. tape. Is that realistic at this point? You're an attorney. Well, here's my take on this whole situation. When Mayor uh, Hodges and I asked for the Justice Department to uh, investigate this case and they agreed immediately, that was a good thing. The person who is the head of the Civil Rights Division of the Department of Justice is a woman named Vedita Gupta. She has an excellent right, a, a history of civil and human rights. She was at the ACLU. She was at the NAACP Inc. Fund. She is not going to sell this case out. Now, she believes that releasing the tape immediately would impede the investigation. If she says that, I have enough confidence in her to say that as soon as the tape can be say, can be released without hurting the investigation. It should be. She has made that promise to the family. So at this point, yeah, I believe in transparency. I believe ta we shouldn't do what happened in Chicago 400 days after the shooting incident and then the tape gets released. That's outrageous. But in this situation, it's been two weeks. If they feel they needed to investigate, uh, I think the family's patient, but it's but it's eventually it's going to have to come out. Okay. Very quickly, I want to ask you about the Planned Parenthood shooting. Yeah. You change your social media picture to a pink screen to show solidarity. Is this the new normal in our nation? You know, I, I pray this is not the new normal, but I have a fear that it could be. We have got to come to grips with the proliferation of guns, with domestic terrorism. I mean, these things are outrageous. I mean, people, armed men with guns, killing other Americans because they don't have the same opinion as them is completely unacceptable. In my opinion, we're not stepping up to do something about it quick enough. All right. Congressman Keith Ellison, thank you so much. I know you have been working tirelessly on these issues, so appreciate your coming in this morning. Thank you, Esme.